November in my bullet journal is one big garden party this time. It is spring for us here, of course, and it is also gearing up for the season of celebration. Hi, it's Erin. Thanks for clicking on my video. Let's get set up for November 2023. It's been a while since I had a Dutch door cover page, so I thought it was time to bring that back. I find I tend to experiment more with things in the beginning of a year, and as I get through the year, I start to get into a bit more of a rut and just keep doing the same thing over and over again. So my November theme was an attempt to kick myself back out of my comfort zone. I've been thinking about doing a light blue theme all year and it just hasn't eventuated. So I decided November was my chance because obviously we're not gonna do light blue for Christmas, are we? As always, there are links to everything I'm using in this video in the description down below. I quite often get questions about how I peel the PET tape off its backing. So I thought I'd show you here. Find yourself a corner that's not too sharp. Use your dominant thumb to roll it towards the design side. As you're rolling slowly, the backing should start to separate away from the sticker design. Try to use the skin of your thumb to catch the sticky part on the back of the design, and that should help you separate your PET tapes. I hope that helps. I'm using two PET tapes very heavily in this one. These are both from the Washi Tape Shop and they are kind of the same series, but they do sell separately. They are the Princess Room PET tapes from the Washi Tape Shop. I hadn't actually been planning on using the peachy apricot colored version, but once I started putting the blue ones down on the page, I did a little test run with my channel members. We always do a live stream kind of brainstorming and mood boarding and planning out how our layout might look. And it became very obvious during that process that I was going to need to incorporate that neutral kind of peachy color as well. Otherwise it was just going to be too much blue. I've lined up a few different decorative elements on that front cover page and cut away along the edges of them to reveal the page behind. And I'm using this washi tape here. This one is also from the washi tape shop. It's from the Italian summer 1983 set. And it was just too good a color match and too beautiful a pattern to not include in this layout as well. I've used that on the next page behind the area that's revealed by taking away the edge of that right page. And now we're going to jump back onto the left side and add a quote. I'd been planning to try and be really fancy and use my dip pen for all of the lettering in this design, but as you'll see in a little while, I had some big smudging issues and I decided it wasn't worth it. So I switched to a brush pen later on, but for now, this quote at least is going to be all in ink from Ferris Wheel Press. This one is the Glistening Glass ink, but I am going to switch to the Tombow Jewel Brush Pen in 528 later on because I just wanted to make my life easier. You'll see, <laughs> you'll see. I wanted a quote that wasn't too obviously springtime, but still kind of gave a little nod to springtime because that's what it is here in the Southern Hemisphere in Australia. So I chose this one. The earth is like a child that knows poetry by heart, which I thought was very beautiful. And do you know what? I was actually really happy with this November heading before I messed it up. So please just enjoy this lettering process and know that it's not going to last. <laughs> that's a lesson in life if ever I've heard one. My pro tip for you today is to leave your inks to dry for longer than you think they need, or this happens. And I wasn't obsessed with that. I could have left it, I could have used some white paint marker to try and cover over it, but I was feeling like maybe there was a better solution. So I've grabbed a piece of just regular printer paper. I'm lettering November in my Tombow Jewel brush pen, as mentioned before. I'm gonna cut around that and I'm gonna layer that same washi tape that we used on the right side of the next page over the top of the header that I have just ruined. And I'm gonna put the lettering that I've just done separately on top of that, like it's a sticker. And hopefully it's fine. It doesn't look as good, I think, as the original lettering did, but it's gonna have to do. I've taken a few different classes on lettering lately, so I've been really enjoying playing around with it a little bit, especially with ink and with a dip pen, but I think maybe we'll have to wait for next year's journal before I feel brave enough to give this another go. I'm introducing another washi tape here to add a bit more balance to the page now that there's a lot more going on above the quote. I thought it needed a little bit of balance, so I've added that washi tape at the bottom that's quite busy, and this door is from Journal Say. I had green ones in another layout earlier in the year, and I haven't used them again because I thought they were a bit too distinctive, you know? But here they are. I'm bringing them back, only two for this whole setup, but I do really like the doors. Again, I felt like something was missing in this space over here, but there wasn't enough room to do anything particularly big and I didn't want anything particularly big so I've added a tiny little calendar here just to fill in a bit of space still make it relevant to November things but give me a reason to add some more flowers to the page as well which is always good 
Just before we turn the page and get started on the calendar spread, I wanted to thank today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is my favorite place to learn online. It is an online learning platform with literally thousands of classes across any creative industry aspect that you could possibly think of. That goes for traditional media, it goes for digital media, it also goes for marketing and business development. So for instance, if you wanted to learn about film and video, I've just clicked onto that section of the site here. It's got all of these related skills at the top, so whether you wanted to learn about how to speak confidently on camera, like the suggested video at the top here, or maybe it's editing that you want to work on, maybe it's effects, maybe it's making your videos look more cinematic, maybe it's understanding the YouTube backend and making your videos perform better. Whatever it is you want to learn, Skillshare have the perfect class for you. You can see from my Skillshare homepage here that I have been doing a lot of painting classes in watercolor and I decided to try one out in gouache. I just recently got some gouache paint. And so I picked this one, Gouache for Beginners, Paint Flower Field with Boca Background with Bianca Reala, who is not just a wonderful artist, but also one of Skillshare's top teachers in art. Over the course of this 55 minute class, which I will admit I rewatched many sections of many times, so it took me much longer than 55 minutes, but still a reasonable amount of time for my day to day life. I went from never having touched gouache paint ever before to painting this lovely little floral landscape. It is so pretty. If you're anything like me, starting out a new hobby like this is really overwhelming when you have like a new set of paints and a blank sketchbook and you don't know where to start. And I would never have known where to start, but now I've done the first page. I feel like I can pick these up more frequently, make mistakes and learn along the way and have a really great time. So I'm looking forward to doing another gouache class on Skillshare very soon. If like me, you tend to give in to the perfectionist tendencies and you lose sight of things halfway through a project, I like to click through to the class project section and have a little scroll through the work that everybody else who's also taken this class has submitted. There's something about just seeing the fact that everybody has interpreted this differently, everybody's artwork looks different, but it is all still beautiful, makes me feel a lot better about my own and makes me think, okay, yeah, maybe my vision is also valid. The first 500 people to use my link will get access to one of Skillshare's best offers yet. It's 30 days free and 40% off your first year of Skillshare membership. Big thanks to Skillshare for offering you this wonderful deal and also for supporting me and my channel and my creative journey. Now let's set up the calendar spread. In a moment of utter daftness, when I was setting this up in pencil, I forgot to allow the space that I was going to be cutting off the left page when I sketched out where my calendar was going to go, so I needed to adjust things a little bit on the fly here. I wanted to make sure that the calendar lines were floating and not in boxes this time around, so I'm using some washi tape to mask off the edges of the areas where I'm going to put the number for each day, and I'm coloring those in over the masking tape so that they stay very nice crispy lines. This is the Tombow 533 that I'm using for this, in case you were wondering what this pen was. I'm usually very much a gridded calendar kind of a girl, but I was feeling like doing something a bit different, so I thought this might be a little bit more elegant, a little bit more whimsical, and it was also a little bit more difficult to work out where the number for each day was supposed to go, but I got there in the end. It was feeling a little bit open-ended, so I decided to add a line at the bottom of the calendar so I knew where to stop writing my events on that bottom row. And I'm also adding a little bit more of the washi tape from London Gifties along the top and bottom, just keeping the decoration pretty simple for this one. But I do have a couple of little gaps, so of course I'm gonna grab out my PET tapes and just grab a few little decorative bits that I can use to layer up and add a little bit of extra pizzazz to this spread. Also, how cute is my new ruler? <laughs> Onward to the next spread, ordinarily here I would have my goals, favorites and musings page on the left side and I would have a one line a day page on the right side. I've actually decided to do away with the one line a day page lately. I've just found I haven't enjoyed filling it out, I haven't been conscious of filling it out, I've skipped a lot of days so I thought if I'm not using it, why not give the page space to something else? I've actually ended up just spreading out the goals, favorites and musings page so that it covers a whole spread instead of just a single page which means that Musings gets the whole right page to itself. To themselves? I'm not sure. Is Musings? I guess Musings is plural. 
If you're wondering how I use this spread, the goal section I think is pretty self-explanatory. I write down some things that I'd like to achieve in the month. The favorites section is what I'm into throughout the month. So if I'm enjoying a TV show or a color or anything else particularly, I'll write it in the favorites section. It's just fun to look back on in the future, you know? And the musing section is a little bit of a snapshot inside my head. The things that I was thinking about, the things that I was worried about, the things that I was excited about, just musings, just anything that I think. It's kind of actually just a brain dump but I don't like the term brain dump so I call it musings instead. I knew I wanted to use one of these beautiful doily lace edged papers somewhere in the design but I have had them for a really long time and haven't actually used them at all so I was like I'm gonna force myself to but I wanted the white edge to show up and obviously in a white page journal that's not really going to happen so I'm making a frame first out of washi tape and then I'm going to stick the doily lace edge paper over the top of that. I'm using a glue pen for all of my gluing in this one because my glue tape has gone rogue it has decided to mutiny and hates me and just simply will not work. So I'm using a glue pen instead. And do you know what? It's amazing. I wish I had one of these a really long time ago. I really do. One of the things that I've noticed happens a lot when you're using these incredibly detailed PET tapes that have lots of little elements that all work together is that I end up cutting off a lot of the little elements. So I'm using this as an opportunity to give them somewhere to live. So I'm just adding little bows and little flowers around. And of course, you know I love to highlight every second line of something when I think it's just missing something and it needs a little lift. So I'm using a light blue Tombow. This one is the 491, just to add a little bit of extra color to that left page. And of course, we always have to add a couple of extra flowers wherever we possibly can. That's it for this spread. It was so quick and easy to set up, which I really enjoy. The next spread is for trackers. On the left page, we're going to do habits. And on the right page, I'm going to have my mood tracker. I've been really enjoying the October habit tracker that I did so far, and I'm just going to keep the same layout for this one. So I've got six spaces for six different habits here. I'm going to draw out a little tiny calendar for each one. And when I accomplish the habit on that day, I will color in the number. And if I don't accomplish the habit on that day, I will cross out the number because I feel like that makes me a little bit more conscious and aware and likely to try to do the habit the next day, if that makes sense. I have deliberately aligned these boxes for each of the tiny calendars a little bit to the right side of the page because I wanted to leave the left side to add some decoration. If you can see there on the screen where I've sketched things out in pencil first, if you want to know what I've got written in that gap that I plan to decorate, I wrote pretty. That's what I do. I separate out a part of the page and I write pretty because that's what it's going to be later. <laughs> By the power of editing magic, you don't have to watch me do all of those numbers. We can just make them appear magically. Isn't that great? This blue bar at the top is where I'm going to write what each habit is. And I'm also going to use that really light blue that I used on the previous page as an offset for every second line. I'm going to use that to highlight the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday initials so that it's differentiated. I'm not going to write my habits in here yet because it is still quite early in October and I don't know which habits I want to track just yet. Dependent on how I go with my habits in October, so we shall see. <laughs> A lot of the elements that I'm decorating with for this video are actually quite large and I didn't have anything that would fit into this space at the top here. So I've thieved a few flowers from a different PET tape set. This one is also from the washi tape shop. It's from their Serene PET tape. I was going to say set, but it's not. It just comes as the one tape. It's the perfect size to fill in this gap at the top here. I feel like the colors still work really well, but I'm actually not going to use it again anywhere else in the layout, which ordinarily I would advise against, but because it's such a good color match, I think we can get away with it this time. We're moving on to the mood tracker now, and this one's going to be illustrative. It was actually completely inspired by a design in the PET tape that I used earlier, this lovely window on the cover page here with the flowers that wrap around the front and the curtains at the top. I thought it was so pretty and romantic. So we're actually gonna draw a version of that. It's gonna take a little while, so I sped it up quite a bit. I haven't done an illustrative mood tracker like this in a while, so I wanted to really have some fun with it and make it something a little bit unexpected. So the window and the curtains are not part of the mood tracker. It's just the flowers along the front and that I will have some of along the top too. I just haven't got to that part yet. Each one of those flowers represents a day and for each day I will color in the flower in a shade of blue that corresponds to a mood that I will assign below the mood tracker when we're finished drawing it out. If you like this mood tracker and you'd like to have one in your own journal, you can do that actually. I've made it available as a printable for purchase on Etsy and if you are one of my channel members, there is a link to it over on the community tab right now so you can download it absolutely free. Just as a little thank you for being my wonderful channel member because I appreciate you so much. I actually ended up putting the crossbar of the window not quite in the right spot so it's a little bit wonky, it's a little bit off center, but don't worry, I fixed that for the printable version. So your version doesn't have that, your version is better. I 
sometimes it's really hard making sure you have exactly 30 or exactly 31 or exactly 28 flowers for one of these mood trackers, but I'm up for the challenge. I'm just adding some little swatches of my pens along the bottom here because these are the ones I wanna use for my moods. I usually do four. I have an ultra happy, a somewhat happy, a meh, and a sad face, and they are adequate for me, but I know some people need a little bit more variety than that in a mood tracker. Of course, you could just mix the colors up if you have more than one mood in a day. That's totally fine. I'm a pretty even mood kind of person. So all of the flowers will be blue, but I needed to pick a couple of pens as well. So referring to my pen swatch page here to color in the rest of the stuff that isn't part of the mood tracker. So the curtains here, I wanted them to match in with that kind of peachy beige that we've got going on elsewhere. So picked a couple of pens for that. Respectively, they are the Tombow 020 and 910. I feel like the illustrative element of this is already quite detailed and with all of the blue on the page, it might be quite a busy page anyway. So I'm actually just gonna keep it to that one strip of washi tape down the left side of that previous page. We're moving on now to the meal planner. I almost didn't include this one this time and I'm very sorry I didn't realize my camera stopped recording. So we've got a quick jump through time there. But November is going to be super busy for me. I have travel for work, I have YouTube stuff, obviously, it gets really hectic towards the end of the year with journal things because you're setting up new journals and I have this project that I'm working on that I can't tell you about yet, but that is taking up quite a bit of time. So if ever there was a month that I need a meal planner, it is this month. Otherwise it is likely that I just will not eat in November. So hopefully this helps me quite a lot. I've done an actual calendar layout this time so I can plan meals for specific days because I will be out of town for a little bit of November. So I needed to plan around that and make sure I'm not leaving food rotting in my fridge. You know, you know the deal. The box underneath the meal planner is a space for a shopping list. And of course on the right page, we have my spending log, which never changes because it works so wonderfully. I write down everything I spend in the spending log. I tally it up by category. It helps me stay on budget. It helps me not spend too much money. It helps me think before I buy something, which is really useful. I like saving money, so I find that it helps me a lot. I also have an overall cash flow tracker at the beginning of my first journal for the year. So once I tally everything up by category, at the end of the year, I can actually go through and see exactly how much money I spent for the whole year on takeaway food or exactly how much money I spent on my car repairs or petrol or whatever it is. So it's scary, but it's also really helpful to have in my humble opinion. Well, would you look at that? I lied to you. I am actually using a tiny bit more of the Serene PET tape. I thought it was just on that one spread. I forgot about this part. So I'm adding a tiny little flower in the top corner here and I tore it as I was peeling it off the backing, which isn't great, but that's the great thing about PET tape. If you just line it up, nobody ever needs to know that it was torn. <laughs> How good. We've got one more specialty planning page before we get into the first weekly. And this is my content planner. And again, like the meal planner, this will be integral to make sure that I have content still going up all throughout November, even when I'm not at home. This one is just another calendar layout, but it has nice big five by five space boxes to make sure that I can put lots of details in there. This is where I plan out what my YouTube videos are gonna be week to week, what my Instagram posts are gonna be, which days they need to go up on. I also plan things for my photography business here. I do live streams here on YouTube where we set up weekly spreads together and I usually do two of those a month so I work out when those are gonna happen on this calendar and when our members only live stream is gonna happen where we plan out the next month's spread or actually I think the next one will be planning out my 2024 initial spreads for my next journal which is gonna be really fun. I have big ideas for that one. So if you aren't a channel member on the hand lettered heroes level, you can't see that. So if you want to see that, you know what to do. There's a join button down below and there's also a link in the description. Regarding the content planner though, if you want to see how I use this really, I have a video showing you a little in-depth look at it from my content planner back in July. So I will link to that in the description down below too, in case you want to see how this really works. It's a lot of work. Look, it's, I realize it's a lot of work. I like to schedule my stuff out a whole month in advance at a time and that's not for everybody, but it works great for me.
just in case you're wondering about this bit of blank space I've left on the right side here, that's where I'm gonna put my key so I can determine which social media account I'm referring to in which color over here so I know what's going on on the rest of the calendar. And since we did a Dutch door for the cover page, why not do a Dutch door for the first weekly as well? For probably all of the weeklies, actually. I've been seeing a lot of Dutch door weeklies lately and I was like, look, I'm gonna jump on the trend. Let's give it a go. I haven't been that creative with my weeklies lately, so let's give it a try. I've cut off some of the right page once again to reveal the page that is behind it. And I'm lining the very edge of that with some washi tape just so that it's really obvious where the edge of that page is. And also because that's an opportunity for a really easy decorative element, which is always great. And I'm adding boxes in the horizontal kind of alignment this time, which isn't my preferred way to weekly usually, but it's been a while since I feel like I did a really good horizontal layout. So let's give it a go. Maybe I'll love it. You never know. I'm doing eight boxes. So there'll be four on the left side, four on the right. Obviously that is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday on the left page, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and notes on the right. And then we have that space on the left page on the left side of the boxes that is for pretty things, as is my custom and likewise behind the flap that's on the right side. We can add some decoration there as well. You could go ahead and cut that off for a few more weeklies if you wanted to. I'm just doing this first one for now. And if I end up cutting off the decoration, that's fine. I've left the next one blank. So we'll just have to see how we go. It depends on if I like this weekly, I guess, but we won't know until we use it. The weekly spreads are where I do the bulk of my weekly planning stuff where I write reminders to myself and to-do lists and where the events are. And then it's kind of just open on my table all of the time throughout the week so that I always can just glance at it and see what's coming up. I do usually like to vary my weeklies week to week these days as well, especially since we're setting them up together on live stream. I like to kind of vary them and try a lot of different weeklies. So we'll have to see, maybe I'll want to stick to the same thing because of this layout with the Dutch door, but maybe I won't. Maybe we'll only do it for that first one. And obviously half of the second one, cause that page is blank now. Um, we'll just have to see how we go. But I still had lots of little leftover bits of stickerage from my PET tapes. So I thought I'd just add a little bit of something extra to these ones. And with that, my garden party November is all set up. Thank you so much for planning with me. Here's a little flip through so you can get the full effect. Don't forget to use the link in the description to sign up to Skillshare to get your first month free and also 40% off your first year of membership. Only the first 500 to use that link get the deal. So you want to be quick. I've got a playlist linked for you here in case you want to see some more of my bullet journaling content from throughout 2023. I have the whole year documented and also recently I did a deep dive into the Archer and Olive subscription boxes and whether or not I think they're worth it. So you can also watch that here if you'd like to. Can't wait to catch you again next week. Have a great one. Bye.